Hi, I'm Scott Baldridge and this is Geometry and Topology Today. Welcome to the beautiful campus of LSU, Louisiana State University, and again we're talking with Moshe Cohen on a, his paper, Moduli Spaces of Ten Line Arrangements with Double and Triple Points, and he's going to talk to us today at a, at a little bit higher level than he did in the previous video. So Moshe, can you set up the, the theorem that you proved? Sure. We have a finite collection, a finite list of complex projective lines in complex projective space. For example, something like x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0, x plus y is equal to 0, and x minus 1 is equal to 0. And instead of just the equations, we can think about drawing this. Just as you would expect. Exactly. Uh, instead of looking at the algebra here, we're going to look at the combinatorics. I'm looking at the intersections of all of these lines. And actually, since we're in projective space, these are really going to meet at infinity. And if I label these, for example, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So right here, just, these are the double points, and there's your triple point. Exactly. Okay. Uh, and we could have here line 1, line 2, line 3, and line 4. We can say, OK, line 1 and 2 meet here, and 1 and 3 meet here, and 2, 3, and 4 meet here, and the last one is 1 and 4. So instead of drawing pictures like this and wondering when they're the same, we can draw this combinatorial intersection lattice. And in fact, to make it a lattice, we'll take a unique minimal element. So instead of studying this, you start studying uh, the lattice. Exactly. And that's going to enable us, instead of looking at lots and lots of different algebraic equations, we're going to look at something more finite. And come, kind of combinatorial. Exactly. All right, so now that we know about the lattice, can you explain a little bit about the problem? We're going to be given some collection of lines in an intersection lattice like this, and we want to know, can this intersection lattice be realized by a picture like this? It's possible that there's no geometric way to realize this by lines. After we ask the question of existence, I want to know about what does our solution space look like? Solution space? You mean... Um what do you mean by that? What are all the, the different solutions to this that are somehow different? And this is where we're going to look at the moduli space. We're going to look at the collection of all arrangements, which are combinatorially equivalent, have the same lattice as this. So this exact same lattice. And then we're going to ask, what are all the different geometric realizations, and, and really, when are they different? And now, how do you tell? When, what, what's the method that you use to tell whether they're different or not? So you, you've got two different uh, um, arrangements. They have the same lattice. How do you tell? What's what's some of the ways that you can tell they're different? As a topologist, I care about the fundamental group of the complement of the arrangement. So take CP two and delete this picture, and then we're going to take the fundamental group there. And now I ask, is it true that the fundamental group is the same for all of these uh, same combinatorial type? And it turns out that answer in general is no. But most of our small examples give us the intuition that the answer should be yes. Where did, before we, now that we're ready for the theorem, um, but before that, can you tell us a little bit about the history? Where did this, this type of problem come from? Zariski in the 1920s came up with a, a pair of examples. They have the same singularity types. But in this case, singularities just look like intersections, double points, triple points, quadruple points. Uh, and they have the same picture that looks sort of like this, but they have different fundamental groups. So that's our motivation for search for quote unquote the risky pairs. Great. Great. Let's let's take a look at the theorem. And now this is joint with Merav Amram, Mina Tyker, and Feye. Great. So let's take a look at the theorem and try to understand it. And um, uh, just by reading through it. So our arrangements are going to uh, be something that looks like this. So we have 18 different lattices. This means that there's 18 different lattices, right? And uh, we're talking about 10 line arrangements. So instead of four, we're going to look at 10 different 
uh, lines in space. And uh, why, don't you, why don't you explain to us you know, the, the, the rest of the statement? So it turns out that if you have just six or fewer lines, this result by Fon in the end of the 90s said that uh, there is no Zariski pair. That is, the combinatorics, this lattice here, determines the fundamental group. That means the fundamental group is fixed for the, the combinatorial type here. This result was extended by Tyker with Garber and Vishna uh, in 2003 for eight, uh, up to eight real lines. And then this was further fixed for all um, uh, arrangements of eight lines, including the complex ones, by Nazir and Yoshinaga. And so now we're up to nine lines, and we know that fewer than uh, eight and fewer, we know that the combinatorics determines the topology. Uh, Fei Ye, one of my collaborators, uh, finished the, the proof that there are no Zariski pair of nine lines, and then the natural question is 10. We're, we're chasing the counterexample that was given by Ribnikov. Uh, he produced a, a pair of 13 line arrangements with 15 triple points. So he's got, he's got a picture like this, but, can, but then has two, uh, two arrangements that are different by the fundamental group. Exactly. And so to really understand this theorem, then you're saying that uh, um, there's infinitely many of these uh, uh, um, lattices. Well, there's going to be finitely, well, finitely many, many of these, but, but, but infinitely many drawings But like millions. This. Uh, very, very large numbers. And so attacking, attacking the problem just from the algebraic geometry without using some of the combinatorics uh, is going to give us uh, a hard problem computationally. We have too many things to look through. So with the millions, though, um, what you've been able to do is reduce it to, if there is going to be a, Z a Zariski pair, then it has to land in one of these 18 examples. Now we would hope that instead of applying techniques to these millions and millions of examples, that the next person can come along and just look through our look list of 18. 18. Great. Now, all right, so now that we understand the theorem, um, why don't you tell us uh, a little bit about the techniques you use to prove the, prove the theorem? This result is split into two papers. The first paper looked at high multiplicity points. We have one quadruple, two quadruples, and one quintuple point. And here, my co-authors looked at the geometry. And this fixed point gave a lot of fixed geometry. Uh, unfortunately, when they moved to just double and triple points, they found it very hard to use that same plan of attack. So I introduced the subject of matroid theory to them. And we studied these by producing the list of matroids. And for that particular case, we came out, out with a list of 71 examples, rather than looking through millions and millions. And then you were able to, to basically weed out out of the 71 down to just this, through some other theorems. Using, using results of Nazir and Yoshinaga, this very smart way of throwing out extraneous cases, we were able to just find uh, this list of 18. Moshe, thanks a lot for coming. And thank you.